This is a quick tutorial on quadric surfaces. So what does that mean? What is a quadric surface? Well, the easiest thing to, to think of it is, is just the, the 3D surface uh, or the 3D mapping of, uh, of the surface of shapes. And, and there's a lot of different shapes that are, are generally uh, in the, the family of uh, the quadrics, such as ellipsoids, hyperboloids, you know, elliptic cones, and so on and so forth. But lucky for us, the only thing that uh, is in the reference handbook is for spheres. So hopefully that's all we need to know. So from page 22 in the handbook, the, um, the standard form of the quadric surface of a sphere is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared plus z minus m squared is equal to r squared. And this is with uh, a, the center at uh, in, in 3D coordinates is at h, k, and m with a radius of r. So let, let's explore this a little bit more. Um, let, let's do an example, uh, just a real quick example. Uh, let's plot some stuff, out, some uh, things out to really uh, give us a, a better feel for what this is and, and how when we see it, how we can use it. So starting off, let's look at um, x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus z squared is equal to 4. So what do we know when we, when we see this equation, what do we know about it? Well, going back to this, the standard form of the equation, we can deduce that the center of this sphere is at 1, 2, and 0. There's no, no m term, so the center is going to be at 1, 2, and 0, and the radius is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So in basic terms, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, as long as we can get the equation down to this, it should be pretty easy to deduce where the, the center is as well as what the radius is. So let's explore this just a little bit more to, to see um, how we can kind of, uh, I guess we call it maneuver within this formula. So let's do, um, let's, let's look at, um, let's set uh, the z variable. Let's set these to a few different things and see what happens within the, the xy plane. A lot of times they call that doing the xy trace. So starting off with our xy, XY trace, let's set z is equal to 0 and then let's see what we get. So just plugging in we get x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared is equal to 4, plugging in that 0. So from this, we know that the center is at, let's do it down here, we know the center is at 1 and 2, and the radius is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So just a really quick plot of this real quick. Again, we're varying z, so let's look at the xy plane and let's plot this out. So we've got x is 1, y is 2, with a radius of 2, Oh, not a very pretty graph, but eh, you, get, you get the idea. So, moving on, let's set z is equal to 1 and see what we get. So we've got x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared 
plugging in 1 squared is equal to 4. So with that, we can say that we've got a, our center is still at 1 and 2. And then moving that over, we can say that our radius is equal to uh, the square root of 3, which is equal to 1.7. So let's plot that out real quick. Again, the center is being is at the same point, but this time we have a radius of 1.7. So it's similar to this, but just a little bit a little bit smaller. Oops. Well, hopefully that looks a little bit smaller. All right, so now let's set z is equal to 2 and see what happens. So we've got x minus, let me kind of separate this out just a little bit more. So at z is equal to 2, plugging in our, our equation, we've got x minus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus 2 squared is equal to 4. So again, the center is still at 1 and 2. But this time, uh, square root of 2 is 2. So moving that over, 4 minus 4 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So the radius is 0. So let's plot that. That's it. <laughs> the center is at 1, 2, and the radius is 0. So I'll get into that a little bit more, but let's, let's go, let's back up 1 and, and see what happens. So let's set z is equal to 1.5 and see what we get. So x minus... 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared plus 1.5 squared is equal to 4. So again, we've got the center is at 1 and 2, and the radius is... The square root of 1.75, which is equal to 1.3. So let's let's plot that out real quick. So again, x y centers at 1, 2, and the radius is 1.3. So similar to those previous circles that we had, it's just a little bit smaller. So let's go with at least something similar to that. So you know when we saw before at um, x is equal to or at z is equal to two, we got just a point. And going backward, we got the, the circles again begin to begin to, to take form. So let's what does that mean? Well, let's let's plot all of this out on the 3D axis and I think it will become a little bit more clear. So let's make this Y, X, and Z. Let me slide that up so you can see it a little bit more. And this being the X axis. So make a few lines on here. So again, going back to the XY trace, uh, we changed, uh, substitute different variables in for, for the, oh gosh, let's change this. Let's make this Z 
in this y. So uh, backing up on uh, what I was saying about the xy trace, we were varying the variables on the z-axis and then we were plotting what the circles look like on the xy plane, which is right in here. So let's plot it out. Let's all, draw it all on this sheet and see what it looks like. So we, we knew that all of the, the center were all at x is equal to 1 and y is equal to 2. So that puts the center about right in here. And then I'll, I'll change colors on this. So at uh, z is equal to 0, you know, right at the bottom, we had our radius was 2. So let's, let's say this looks something like, I'll, 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 try, I'll try my best to draw this. Well, <laughs> there we have it at, um, at uh, z, z is equal to zero. Uh, this is what our, our circle looked like. So now let's go to z is equal to one, and I'll change colors to green here. So again, we had our, our center was at one, two, but this time we had a radius. It was a square root of three. So the radius at z is equal to one was 1.7. So coming out, it's just a little bit shorter, or a little bit smaller, rather. Well, let's say that's a, a radius of 1.7. Now we had, uh, let's see, I'll change to, to purple here. So z is equal to 2. Well, what did we have? We just had a, a point, right? Because again, we're, we're coming up. At 2, we just had a point. And I'm going to, and this point was the 1, 2. I'm just going to erase that so we see this. So what, so, <laughs> wait, we have, wait, we have one more, one more circle to draw. So I'll, I'll do this in orange. And it was a 1.5. Well, what was it? It was, again, it was 1.2 was the center, and the diameter, or the radius, rather, was 1.3. So at 1.5, which is just below that dot, we had it looks something like that. And I wish I was a little bit better at drawing. It would probably become a little bit more apparent. But, but what is this? As we're going up, up the z-axis, we got the circles are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So that is, it's really the wireframe of a sphere. And, I, and I'm hoping that's coming through. But if we continue to plot, um, if we uh, continue to, to change the, uh, uh, the, uh, the numbers for the z variable in the negative direction, well, we would get the same thing. We would get it coming like that. The, the, um, at z is equal to 2, well that's just the top of the sphere because again that, that the circles are getting smaller, 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 so they're just a point. And there it is. So hopefully this um, uh, will help explain a little bit better um, just kind of how to maneuver um, in and around and, and understand what the quadratic uh, surface is for a sphere.